how are we going to engage people? And uh, over the course of time, uh, you know, and I can say course of time because Bell's Milling, as a 55-year-old company, has got a little bit of time under its belt. So we, uh, we, we like our community and we like to show people what we do. And uh, I think we're learning a little bit about how to move forward in, in uh, doing just that. First slide here is pretty, uh, pretty self-explanatory for those of you who've been uh, waiting uh, while we get started. Our company is 55 years old and it was started by Bud Belstra. Uh, he uh, uh, was a little bit raised in the turkey business and then bought the feed company from the people who had the turkeys. Today our company is uh, both family and employee owned and uh, so we are, uh, we very much have our own livelihoods at, at stake every single day. We're very proud of that. Uh, last year we had uh, sales of about uh, uh, $48 million in feed and uh, we feed both pigs and dairy cows primarily and uh, uh, the pigs that we feed are mostly all our own and uh, we had about $28 million, or $25 million worth of sales in the pig business. So I've spent uh, there a second uh, saying what, what goes on. Belstrom Milling Company is, is uh, both a feed company and a pig production and service company. Uh, we will mix and deliver about 115,000 tons of feed per year. Uh, we, we feed mostly pig feeds, although uh, we also feed about 40,000 dairy cows that have moved into northwest Indiana. If any of you have ever gone to see the Fair Oaks uh, dairies or the Fair Oaks farms displays, that is us, that is in our neighborhood. We feed all those cows. Uh, we are actually a sponsor and a partner in that, that uh, dairy adventure land. And, um, and the dairy farms are actually very, uh, very near and dear as well, right in and around and through each other. And so uh, when it comes to uh, conversing with the, with the public, with uh, conveying our message. We've actually had some pretty good teachers from the uh, Fair Oaks people. And we'll talk about that a little bit more coming up. Our feed and pig companies have about 100 employees. So there are a lot of, uh, a lot of family members and a lot of faces uh, involved. And I'm happy to say that actually today here at uh, World Pork Expo, we've probably got about uh, 15 of them uh, that have taken time. Uh, we think it's very important for them to come and see what the rest of the world is doing. The other part of our business is that we are in the production uh, and uh, service part of the pig business. <clears throat> we have designed and constructed, uh, managed and support uh, five companies, uh, five pig farms. Uh, there are, all five of those farms are multiplier farms for pig improvement company. Uh, we've been involved, involved with Pig Improvement Company, or PIC, since 1982. So that, there's a very long relationship there. And uh, we think that that holds us to a uh, higher expectation of, of how we should uh, run our farms and how they uh, should appear to the public. Today we have about uh, 11,000, 12,000 sows, uh, and uh, all in confinement and in uh, very modern farms. And we supply the gilts from those farms to about 80 and probably closer to 85,000 uh, commercial sows throughout the nation. And so uh, while very few people probably have heard about Bell's Milling Company, uh, we reach out and touch people in a, in a fairly unique way and uh, have uh, delivered gilts to all the Midwest states and all the way down to the Carolinas. Uh, and then we produce about five different breeds of females uh, depending on what the different farms uh, throughout the nation need and, and you can see those there. Uh, as you can see we are located there in the northwest corner of Indiana and uh, also we also we have some of our farms in the northeast corner of Illinois and so uh, the border is only 20 miles away and we cross it pretty freely. But our uh, customers are certainly throughout the Midwest and uh, even down in the Carolinas we have some. And then we have one of our farms that actually sends uh, wean pigs out to uh, south central Kansas uh, to a customer and partner there. 
and uh, then they start selling gilts from there west and north and so we reach quite a long ways. The Iroquois Valley Swine Breeders is one of our five farms and uh, I put the picture up here because uh, of a couple of different things. First of all, it's, it's a fair to finish operation. Very few companies in the United States uh, that have been built in the last 10-15 years are fair to finish in one site. We, uh, we built this one uh, 20 years ago. Uh, it is an incredibly productive uh, farm. Uh, it has uh, been averaging about 30 pigs per sow per year, which for a single site farm is way out there. And uh, we have converted this farm in a couple of little simple ways so that it can be seen by the public without ever going through the doors. Uh, nobody really wants to take a shower just to see a pig but everybody wants to see the pig. And uh, our history in our pig business is that uh, 50 years ago, you could drive up and down the roads of Indiana, uh, Illinois, Iowa, and you could see pigs, sows, growing pigs out in the field. And then after a couple of snowstorms and a couple of uh, nasty rainstorms and some dust, some bright farmers thought, hey, we ought to put a roof over their head. That seemed like a pretty logical thing to do. Well, then the winds kept going through, and so we said, hey, I think we'll put walls around the uh, building, and the next thing you know, people cannot see inside. And I, I think that we need to remember that as we engage our public, is that <clears throat> for many, many years, whether people liked the smell or not, they could see them and they knew what was going on, and there's no mystery. Today, they're all behind the door, and uh, we need to find ways to make sure that they can see what's going on to verify that we really are doing a good job with those animals. I want to make a point here uh, the, the, about the population, the people who eat our food. Uh, if you look at those, those uh, cities up there, the top five cities is New York, and then Los Angeles, and then Chicago, Houston, and Phoenix. And I guess I want to ask you, how many of those cities do you think are in the belt where pigs are raised? At best, Chicago. Uh, let's face it, there are just about no uh, four-legged pigs in uh, New York. There are uh, very few in LA and Houston and Phoenix are not exactly what we would call the hotbed of pig production. So what do we do about urban, urban areas? Uh, we have decided that we will do what we can at Belster Milling where we live. We are in Northwest Indiana, and, and there's a little corner of Northwest Indiana that has two counties that sort of think that they're part of Chicago. In fact, there's about 670,000 people in those two counties, so they're pretty highly populated. And then, right across the border is, uh, is Chicago with just under three million people uh, on the books. And so we see those as, as two uh, related but distinctly different urban areas, and, and we have made uh, efforts to try and reach out to those from uh, our little corner of the world. First District uh, Representative of the State of Indiana is uh, Representative Peter Visklosky, and uh, about a year and a half ago, we sat down with uh, his honor and said, uh, do you understand, really, what it means to have local food, and where do you want it? You've got 670,000 people in your district. The averages say that each pig will feed about two or three people per year. You know, that's 60 pounds of pork per year, sort of a number, plus minus. So do you want, do you want a pig in every backyard because there's two or three people in every house in the Northwest District? Or do you want them raised by professionals elsewhere? And that was like a two by four between the eyes for the man. He readily agreed that there is no way that he wanted to have all those animals to feed that local area being raised up where all the people are at. He's more than happy to have them raised about 25, 30 miles south. And I, I, I think that that's an important thing for us to be able to convey that message to people is that we are professionals doing our job and you don't want to have everybody else trying to do that in their backyard. Um, not very many people are trying to build an automobile in the backyard if they want a new GM or a new Ford. Why should they be trying to raise pigs in their backyard? 
It's, uh, it's not what they're all about. So, Bell's Vermilion Company uh, slaughters about 140,000 pigs a year. And our message to Representative Vesklosky is, we can produce 125 quarter pound meals for every person in your district. Now, uh, 125 means that about two or three meals a week of, of pork, our company alone takes care of this district. And I think that that's a, a little different angle to the message, and it was, he was very responsive to that. So we are part of the solution uh, for feeding people. Another area that we have worked on a lot in the last year and a half is uh, we've gotten involved with uh, food banks of Northwest Indiana. About a year and a half ago, uh, the uh, Indiana Pork people started talking about a million meals program and I really, really like that idea. But the problem is is that um, we're not very close to Indianapolis and so it was, it was hard for us to think about how to participate with the animals in the million, million meals program. We took it on ourselves and what we've done is we donate uh, three light pigs uh, every week. And when we finish a pig, uh, uh, usually they're up about 250 to 280 pounds, but sometimes there are less aggressive pigs that don't grow quite as fast. They're, they're, they're perfectly healthy, uh, but they'll only be 200 some pounds. And so we donate three of those every week to the uh, Food Bank of North, Northwest Indiana. And they are the distribution point for 105 food pantries in two counties. And that blew me away, that there was 105 food pantries, soup kitchens, and stuff like that within, within 30 miles of where we have our farms. And so we have teamed up with them to, to make sure that they have enough pork. And now uh, the dairy farms are giving a, a dairy cow through our system uh, every other week. And so we're both giving about the same amount of meat to the uh, food pantry. Or to the food bank on behalf of the food pantries. We are part of the solution, and, I, and that's, that's one of the themes that you're going to see me continue to work with here. The one comment that they, I've really enjoyed them do, uh, saying to me is that they want people to understand how, uh, how desperately needed high quality protein is. Uh, there's a lot of hungry people in our nation, and they need what we have. In fact, one of the things that has just happened in the last uh, little bit, because I was asked to say, well, what's next, is that we've been invited to be a speaker uh, at their annual uh, Be Healthy uh, Nutrition Conference, in which they bring all the people who work at their food pantries together for a nutrition conference, and they've asked us to give a speech about how to take food from the farm to the table by way of the food, uh, by way of the food bank. And I guess, I just think that we have to continue to verify to the people who are really hungry and who are supporting those people that we're part of that solution. Um, one of my favorite little snide comments is that uh, hungry people don't blog. And if you think about it, uh, those who really need food, they're not the ones sitting on the typewriter giving comment about, well, should that pig be raised indoors or outdoors? Should it be... Uh, in a, should its mother be in a stall or things that really, when you're hungry, you don't care. You need the food, and that's what we provide. Okay, uh, the big dog, the 800-pound gorilla in the middle of the room is Chicago, Illinois, for us. Uh, through a variety of, of uh, I guess, providential and goofy uh, uh, relationships, we have gotten involved with a group called the Chicka Gourmet Food Tours. And uh, probably the, if you want to be a name dropper, one of the famous people uh, who is one of the, uh, the board of directors of Chicka Gourmet is uh, Dutchie Carey, Harry Carey's wife. Uh, we've, uh, we've had them down on three different occasions. They're coming back again on July 24. So we get these bus loads of people that are from downtown Chicago, they've got money to burn, they've got nothing better to do than to go out and see a farm, and we bring them out and we show them 
Iroquois Valley. And they think it is absolutely the coolest thing since sliced bread. In fact, I, I put one of them up there, and I uh, won't be so fancy as to pull up her uh, blog, but there was a young lady who was on the tour, and she writes foodloveswriting.com. I challenge you to write it down, go out there and look on it, and you'll see Day on the Farm. And uh, she took a tour with us, and then we also took her over to the dairy as well. It blows them away. When they see through the windows that the pigs are doing just fine, and that everybody's taking care of them, and that it can be zero degrees outside and 65 degrees indoors, and everybody's comfortable and dry, she was impressed. We need more people like that to see what we're doing. We've also had uh, people from uh, Chicago's Department of Cultural Affairs. Mayor Daly's uh, chief cook person has been with these tours and come in and, and uh, set up other subsequent uh, uh, interactions. Uh, later on this summer, uh, the Chicago Culinary Historical Society wants to come and see what happens on the farm. I mean, who finds these people? I don't know, but they, they find us because they're finding out that it is a it is a destination where they can see what reality looks like, and that is wonderful. Uh, I've also been asked to do somewhat the same thing for the Indiana Historical Society. They want to have a town meeting here later this year, and so I'll be putting a presentation on about the uh, environmental and the food uh, interactions out in the rural district. Uh, these things that kind of come up. The last one on the line here is Museum of Science and Industry. And uh, uh, once again, through some uh, uh, unexpected relationships, we, we were uh, involved in putting together video. Now, the, the Museum of Science and Industry has 1.8 million people that tour it every year. Uh, in the middle of it is the food tech, and all the pig pictures come from our farms. And they wanted to expand and build on that. And we actually had some money that was allocated by Pork Board. And that went really good until uh, this H1N1 uh, event of last year really kind of creamed the budget. But uh, I still have hope for it because there is, there is a great way to reach and touch a lot of people. And I believe that that's a great prototype for those other five uh, uh, cities like New York and LA and Houston and Phoenix and anything else that's got a lot of big, uh, big numbers of people. All right. Uh, I forget my time frames here. Probably about eight months ago, uh, uh, Country View Family Farms, there was a video that was circulated through Fox News and, and, uh, Actually, uh, knowing some of the country view people and knowing some of their protocols, yeah, their people were being a little bit rough with the pigs, and not, uh, we don't condone that. But, but some of their product, some of their procedures were not all that far out uh, or, or or harsh to the animals. However, I had a phone call from an employee, and in fact, uh, Lorena is here on site. She's one of the people who are here today. But she said, I saw that on the news, and you don't have to worry because you can show anybody what we do. We'll take good care of your pigs all the time. I thought to myself, well, why not? So I started hatching an idea, you know, why don't we just put a video stream in? And uh, if anybody wants to go to realpigfarm.com, I went to GoDaddy, and I bought that domain. And uh, uh, realpigfarms.com has got a, 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 a stream of a farrowing house and a stream of a breeding barn, and it's stall at stalls. And uh, we've had it before where uh, we'll be showing people uh, out on the East Coast, and the guy is sitting on the back of a sow, and he's holding a cachette, and he's breeding and doing AI, and doesn't even know the video camera's on him, and he's scratching his head. But that's all that's going on in there. And to be pretty blunt, the idea is, is that if they want to sit and watch it, it's really boring, but that's the way it is in a barn. It's not like we're a bunch of sadistic, evil people beating animals. Uh, that, that, that's just, 
that's repulsive to us. And so, there's the video. Check it out. Uh, if I had more time, I'd show, I'd, I'd figure out how to uh, get it hooked up here because it, it's got lights in it, so you can go on it at two o'clock in the morning for all I care. But it's, it's there, and our attitude is anytime, anywhere. Uh, we're, we're proud of what our people do, and uh, the, they all know that the video is there to show off that they are doing the right job, never to monitor them in case they're doing something wrong. Because they've already promised that they're doing just fine. There you go. That's how we engage our public.